If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we're going to be going over my crossover dress deck profile. So DBT06 came out, and overdress is basically obsolete. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just kidding. Maha Nirvana is probably still the best overdress deck, but um, crossover dress is a really fun new mechanic introduced in DBT06, and I'm going to show you guys my crossover dress deck profile featuring all the new cards and basically what crossover dress is and how it's different from regular overdress and um, my personal thoughts on the deck so far. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Starting off with our grade zero, it's Surprise Egg. Um, it's instead of Sunrise Egg, we got Surprise Egg. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. You can run either or, but uh, this is the one that came in the set. Uh, it has the exact same effect as all the other starters and it matches the theme because it's a new starter. I, I just, it's an egg. I like it, cute. All right, going on to the grade one, uh, Reno got retrained. So it's a heart pounding blaze made in Reno. So what Reno does is when this is written upon by snuggling blaze made in Rayu, you search your deck for a trick star and call it to rear, shuffle your deck. So it's similar to the original Reno that lets you search a trick star. Uh, nothing is really different there. So, and then it's got the other skill on rear during your, uh, if you have a prayer dragon in the same column as this, this gets 5k. So that's if you want to run this in the main deck, you can have this as a nice little 13k beater if you would like. So there's that option as well. Then for our grade two in our right deck, we're running Snuggling Blaze Maiden Rayu. So this is where the deck gets a little different. So it's when this is wrote upon by Chakrabarthi, Phoenix Dragon, Nirvana, Jeva, or Ava, or however it's pronounced. Um, look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose up to one prayer dragon from among them, and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Uh, it has a similar skill with the, if you have a prayer dragon in the same column, this gets 5k, so it can be a nice 15 beater which is cool um, so the whole deck is revolved around these new units called prayer dragons which is what helps you perform crossover dress so it's nice that this helps you at least filter through your deck to look for those and then we have our main boss grade three that we sit on for the entire game it's Ch chakra bar the phoenix dragon nirvana jiva so what this does it's similar to the original one where you discard a card to grab a trick star from drop but in this case you can discard a card from hand to call a trick star and up to one prayer dragon from your drop zone to the rear. So you get two cards for the cost of one, which is nice. The second skill is when this attacks, you kind of blast one. Choose one of your rear guards in the crossover dress state and stand it. So you don't give any power, which is what the original Nirvana did, which was nice, but at least you get to multi-attack, which is nice. So I kind of I kind of like that. Um, there are a lot of really good crossover dress units, so being able to restand them uh, is pretty dope. So that's kind of like the whole gimmick is that you want to be able to do four attacks each turn for the cost of a counterblast, and depending on which unit you are crossover dressed into, it kind of decides what you're doing for that turn. So now we're going into the main deck, starting off with our grade threes. Three more copies of Nirvana, just because Persona Ride is really good. Um, yeah, that's basically the main reason. So as you're filtering through your deck and removing prayer dragons, um, drawing cards, you're gonna probably be seeing your Persona Ride and your Nirvanas pretty consistently. So then going into our other grade three, I am running four copies of the grade three crossover dress unit, which is Brand by Rena. So what this unit does is crossover dress. So you need a trick star, and a prayer dragon. So that's the other thing that's nice about crossover dress is that you don't need to use specifically named prayer dragons. It can just be any prayer dragon. So basically crossover dress is where you choose two of your units. One is trick star, the other is a prayer dragon. You combine them both and stack them on top of each other onto a rear guard circle, then place this unit from your hand onto the two units, kind of like as if your rear guard has a soul. So then this, this one's effect is Continuous during your turn, if this is in the crossover your state, this gets 10k. If your opponent's at grade 3, it gets another 10k. So it's a 33k beat stick for free. <laughs> um, second skill is when this unit attack hits a vanguard, if this unit is in the crossover dress state, you soul blast one, choose one of your columns, and retire all of your opponent's units in that column. 
What I really like about this unit is that you, because you're targeting your own column, you can get over resist and you can get over certain uh, units that have named effects where they cannot be chosen by card effects. Since you're not choosing the unit, you're choosing the column and you're choosing your column, they, they, it completely overrides um, that. So it's a really, really good control card, which I like. So that's why I'm running it at, at four. It's a beat stick. You can restand it with Java and, and it pressures your opponent to lose two units for a single soul blast. So this card is really, really good in terms of how it manages resources. So I really, really like this card at four. Um, just being able to see this and kind of pressure your opponent really early can make a really big difference on how your opponent guards and also they're kind of thinking do i want to guard a big 33 beater or and and keep my board or should i just lose my board um and also i feel like there isn't a lot of overdress decks that build boards super easy and consistently so it is a big loss to lose two units especially if they're key vital units to your combo so now we're moving on to grade twos uh for grade twos i'm only running three copies of garu Irina. So this is kind of like the, the the main unit that got me into a, a crossover dress just because it's it's Virena with swords for arms. So what Garu Virena does is same thing, crossover dress, a trick star and a prayer dragon, stack them on top of each other, call it. And when this is in the crossover dress state, this gets 10k. And during the battle of this unit attack, if your opponent will call cards from their hand to the guard circle, they must call two or more at a time. So what I like about this unit is because Java lets you restand a rear guard, you can swing with that pressure that they need to guard with at least two or more. You can restand it and then swing again. If you get a critical trigger, um, applying it here has a really big benefit as well, just because your opponent can't just perfect guard it. Um, and the grade two prayer dragon, there's a, uh, what's his name? Garu, Gal Gallon Light, Gallandite. Um, if it's specifically the outer dress, which is the unit that is uh, in the crossover dress stack, I think that's how, how the wording is, it can give Garvarina even more power. So this can get up to 30k uh, before we even Persona Ride, which is nice. Going on to our next grade two, we're running the other crossover dress unit. I'm only running this at three as well. It's similar with the crossover dress wording, Trickstar and a Prayer Dragon. The first skill is when it's placed uh, by crossover dress. You can choose a card from your drop zone that has the crossover dress ability besides this unit. So it can't have the same name and you can add it back to your hand. So this helps you kind of re reuse your crossover dress units, which is really helpful considering that I'm only running, you know, these 10 copies. So being able to reuse those is very helpful. The second skill is if this unit is in the crossover dress state, this unit uh, cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects and it gets an extra 5 attack and it gets an extra 10 shield. So it's kind of like Virena Urger where if you intercept it's a 15k shield and um, it's continuously has the 5k so your opponent can't just like swing at it for just the 10. So it's a kind of like how the picture shows is a, it's a shield. So it helps you get resources, it helps defend you, so and it's, you know, it's a nice uh, 15k attacker. So if you throw an 8k behind it, it's a 23k column. All right, so those are our crossover dress units for the grade twos. And then lastly, for our grade twos, I am running three copies of Gallandite. So Gallandite is a prayer dragon. Uh, prayer dragons will have it written underneath their nation, what type of card unit they are. Uh, when this becomes the or uh, original dress, not outer dress, that's what it is. Outer dress is the unit on top. Um, when this becomes an original dress, ch uh, choose one of this unit's outer dress units and it gets 5k. And then if the outer dress unit is specifically Garu Virena, it gets another 5k. So, I mean, it doesn't say till end of turn, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, but I will look into that to see if it is errated to end of turn. But um, what's really nice is just that the turn that you cross over dress, it does get that power, which is nice. It gives a 5k to pretty much anything. Um, but if it is specifically guard of Irene, it gets even more power. So especially with that guard restrict, where one has to guard two or more, that's what gets it up to the 30k. So I do like having the Gallandite up to the three. Um, and kind of making more space for the other prayer dragons, so I'm just leaving all my grade twos at three apiece. Now we're getting into our grade ones, starting off with our resource card. 
Flash Equip Dragon Bramada. So what Bramada does is when this becomes the original dress, you can counterblast one, you can draw two cards, and then you discard a card from your hand. So the reason I'm running for Bramada is it's basically the Virena arcs for crossover dress. Um, the only thing is you do have to discard, you know, uh, but there is a lot of, you know, returning cards from the drop back to the rear. Uh, Java gets you, lets you get two units for the cost of discard one, so it, it kind of mitigates it. Um, the reason we're running four is obviously because the draw two is really helpful. It can help you find more crossover dress units and costs and shield. So, and because any um, crossover dress unit, any Virena, can use any prayer dragon as its cost, this is just always a go-to if you just need to get some resources. So it works for all of the crossover dress units. And for my other grade, one prayer dragon, we're running two copies of Biskel. So Biskel's skill is when this becomes the outer dress, if it is retired from rear or the guardian circle during your opponent's turn, you can soul blast to call this back to a rear guard circle or open rear guard circle. Uh, what I like about this card is that if you want to keep your board and you don't really use too much soul in this deck, the only other card in the deck that uses soul is Bram Virena, you can just have another unit back to pay costs for crossover dress easily because it's a prayer dragon. So this is obviously designed more for um, Zils Virena just because you intercept with it and then you call it back, but it is a prayer dragon and there's a lot of searching for Prey Dragon. We just want to keep that consistency there. But because um, it is Soul Blast 2 and it's kind of a heavy cost, I'm only using it at the two copies for now. Then to our other grade ones, we got our three perfect guards. So this is the new uh, PG with the same skills, uh, the DBTL1 PGs um, for set six. When it's placed on guard circle, choose a unit, cannot be hit. If you have two more cards in hand, you must discard. We're running the three regular PGs because we are running the one Elementaria Sanctitude. So this is the order that came in the new trial decks. So what Elementaria does is you can only run one in the deck. It has Sentinels, so now we have our four Sentinels. And then if your opponent's Vanguard has Triple Drive, this may be played for free. And then when it's played into the order zone, you discard a card from your hand. If you have a grade three or less Vanguard, choose one of the units and it cannot be hit, and then you remove this card. So we don't go to grade four at all in this deck, so we're not using any of the original overdress support. So we'll always be at grade three, and then if we play against any grade four decks that have triple drive, this will be free. So it's just good to have just in case. All right, and then we're not moving into triggers because we gotta basically show off the boy, the MVP of the deck, Trickstar. Uh, it got reprinted as well in DB206, which I think is really helpful. So if you want to build this deck, all you need is the support strictly from the booster, the booster set. You don't need to buy the trial deck at all, the start deck at all, to build this deck. You just need new support from DBT06, which is really nice. Uh, Trickstar does have a skill, actually. It's just that this unit cannot be chosen by opponent's card effects, so that if it's on the board, it's pretty much going to stay on the board, which is nice. So... He's a, he's a little mascot for our deck. All right, so now we're moving on to triggers. Starting off with our over trigger, Drag Veda. Uh, Drag Veda actually got reprinted in DBT06, so you can also get this in the booster set as well. Uh, it's an over trigger, so it gives 100 million power. Its additional effect is you choose your Vanguard and we stand it. So this is really nice because with Java, you can, if you have two open counter blasts, you can swing counter blast, we stand a rear guard. Restand your Vanguard, and then you can do it again with the extra open counter blast, which is nice. You can get six attacks during that turn. So the over triggers Dark Vader is really good in this deck. I'm gonna put that aside, going into our critical triggers, starting off with four Burning Flail. This is the crit with the skill from DBT03. Like all the other ones, does the same thing at the end of the battle boost. Put it into your soul, choose a unit, give it 2k. Uh, like I said, we do have some soul in the deck. Um, it's not necessary. I just think I just happen to have the card anyways and crits with or triggers with skills are always better than triggers that don't have skills. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but if you the vanillas work just fine. You don't need these crits at all. It's just an extra little splash if you happen to have them, but you can run vanilla crits. Uh, speaking of vanilla crits, we're actually running six crits. 
Um, so we're running two more vanilla crits. I'm using the artwork that came with the booster set because I kind of want to keep this deck as like a super booster set focus. You know, not really using anything from the old trial decks. And then I'm running three plays made in Promise. So this is the front trigger from DBTO2. So what Promise does is if your opponent's Vanguard is greater or greater, this gets five shield. So I am running it for the extra shield. And also it's nice to have that front trigger, especially because um, after your, your Vanguard attacks and you restart and one of your units, you still have two units to attack with and the front trigger can help make up for some big numbers. This also really helps with Garu Vyrena a lot just because it makes it an even bigger boy, making it harder for your opponent to guard when they want to just PG it just because it's so big that they have to guard with at least two or more at a time. So it, uh, it does help and I do like front triggers in standard decks. Then we're running two copies of Flare Bell Dragon. I do like draw triggers in this deck because I do want to draw into my resources and draw into my fairy dragons. You can easily just run two more crits, that's fine. But what this one does, similar to the front, if your opponent's grade three, five shield. Um, I do, I'm just kind of playing around with this new ratio with the six crit, four stand, two draw, but uh, with how much pressure you might want to do the four crit. The uh, pressure I mean by Garu Virena and Bram Virena being so big, and also the fact that um, you're getting multi attacks and your opponent might just take the Vanguard because your Vanguard is your weakest attack, um, just so they can make up and PG your rear guards. Getting crits might just help you seal the game by crit, crit, and then that's it. Um, but I am just playing around with the draw triggers uh, just to, because when you don't see a prayer dragon, you're kind of screwed because you 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 need two units to cross over dress instead of just the one trick star so it's, there is that slight difficulty with performing crossover dress sometimes if you don't see your resources um, the draw triggers are just there so that you can draw into more resources and hopefully see the cards you need to kind of make up for that and then finally we're going into heal triggers starting off with the ones with skills stealth fiend amavira this is the one where if your opponent's unit is attacking two or more times, it gets an extra 15 shield. So if you're playing against decks like Bastion, um, Bruce, uh, Java, Nirvana Java, or Youth Burke and their units that are attacking multiple times, um, you know, well, I guess it wouldn't work with uh, Youth Burke just because it's a different unit that's attacking, but you guys know what I mean. So if our Flagberg, there we go, that's a good example. If it's units that are attacking multiple times, it gets an extra 15 shield. So just a precaution for that. And then I'm also running the Cure Flare Draco Kit. This is the one where if your opponent's unit is increasing its critical due to an effect, not by a trigger, it gets an extra 15 shield. So that's also super helpful with against decks like uh, Bruce and uh, Youth Burke. So there's different scenarios for both of these. Uh, you can play around and do either just one of them, uh, two of each of a specific one, depending on your meta or your locals. So it's really up to you, but I'm just doing one of each for now. And then lastly, we're doing our vanilla heals. So, you know, just four heals. Uh, where we're doing the vanilla heals because it does have an extra five shield, the new skill heals only have 10 shield. So it does make a difference when you end up trying to maximize the two and two of the new heals. You're losing some shield value there, so keep that in mind. But if you honestly just want to stick with the vanilla heal triggers, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so that was it for the deck profile. So the one thing I do want to stress um, that is a little weird about this deck is that none of the original overdress support is used in this deck at all um and i would say that it is just a little bit awkward considering that we are running about nine prior dragons in a deck of about 46 cards so it's just a little bit weird when you're trying to see nine out of your 46 cards just to perform the ability to cross over dress um but you can't really like you know have too much of one and then not enough of the other because if you have a lot of prayer dragons but nothing to cross over draft with they're just vanillas 
and then you can't really have too many crossover dress units because without the prairie dragons they're also just vanillas so it's a, it's a weird give and take between the two that's why i think the mahar nirvana is a lot more consistent especially because mahar banana ver, nirvana has a way to go directly into mahar with that grade one from festival collection and uh just being able to do the same thing with the multi-attacking for much more power and also triple drive is better <laughs> so i do think this deck is a lot of fun i am having a lot of fun with it with uh kind of the mechanic and the play style of it and i think if you're thinking about building this deck go for it there's going to be new support for crossover dress in dbt07 so look forward to that um, so I would say that if you are planning on building this deck, don't buy any original overdress support at all. Do not buy arcs. Do not buy the start deck. Um, don't, don't worry about any of that stuff. Don't pick up Mahars. Don't, uh, there's, there's no reason to. So I would say save your money in that and just go start straight from DBT06 and then go from there. If you plan on building a crossover dress deck. All right, so thank you again for watching. I always really appreciate you guys coming out and watching my deck profiles. And uh, you, there is the gameplay of this deck. I did misplay, so again, sorry. Um, not misplay, but I guess I can't read my cards correctly. So there's that. I'm hoping to show some more games with this deck in the near future as we're kind of developing and moving into standard with this new DBT06 format. Yeah, thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.